Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Marketing Masterclass. And thank you to WHT for inviting me to deliver this session today. We're going to be looking at approaching your value proposition and go to market plan, looking at key principles of marketing and your infrastructure and how that can be affected due to the current climate and future uh, economic rebound for COVID-19. We've put a poll out there to ask you uh, what type of marketeer you are. Just help me tailor uh, some of the conversation as we move forward as to whether you're more B2B or more B2C. Now, obviously, we've got quite an interesting road ahead of us. And for that, uh, that's very much a front of my mind, certainly at the moment, as I'm approaching the work that I'm doing with my clients and also for my company, Haynes Marcoms. Now, I've been working in the industry now for over 15 years and in marketing for over 20, primarily in technology and marketplaces helping both business and consumer marketing campaigns and strategies. At this current time, there's a lot to be thinking about, particularly in the messages that you need to convey to the marketplace, as well as um, how consumers are feeling and their sentiments. Just to give you an idea, um, I'm a seasoned traveler. I love traveling. I probably travel between 10 to 12 times a year, both personal and for business purposes. I have my first flight coming up this Friday, and I am telling you right now, I am terrified. I am absolutely apprehensive. I don't know if the flight's going to be taking off. I don't know if when I get to the destination, I'll be able to get through security control. There are so many um, ifs and whats in the equation. So how can you help your consumers and your buyers become more confident and be, be more trustworthy in the products you're providing, but also once they purchase them, making sure that they can also make the most of them. So as part of that and your journey through COVID-19, these are some of the things to truly think about. So um, as we uh, enter the presentation, I'd first like to uh, introduce the fact that Haynes Marcons is uh, more than just myself. Uh, this is our team. We are a range of specialists in our field of business and consumer, working with design and digital, as well as having some senior associates that help us with more global uh, strategic placement for businesses to be able to help you grow and develop and scale. This, as I mentioned, is a very different time. I mean, we were booming just six months ago. Uh, we would never have thought that uh, everything would have been coming to a point where we are today. But we are very much in a low-touch economy uh, where every interaction certainly counts. Whether it's for consumer or for business, we're not having those personal face-to-face -face engagements in which we were able to develop relationships in the past. Digitally, we've had to advance very quickly. So how are you transforming the way you both deliver your marketing and your services and how you support your overall team? We're also having to identify now where we sit, what our business actually offers at this particular time. And now we've seen the role of essential services become incredibly prominent, whereas in the past, they just used to be a foundation of everything that we did. So we've had to really rework what it is that we offer and how we go out to the marketplace. Teams now are spread out in more locations than they ever have been but it's never been more paramount to make sure that your teams are aligned to bring greater efficiencies. Unfortunately, we're going to see job cuts. Uh, and We're going to have to uh, see uh, people uh, putting in, um, perhaps, um, they be involved with more areas of the business. Therefore, how are they able to understand how different streams within the business, different departments are working to enhance the customer value? And it's also important for us to build those right customer connections. And whether it's for B2B, perhaps a more consultative approach, and for B2C, to really earn their trust in what we're offering. So, uh, Haynes Marcoms, uh, we have released a guide uh, for developing the principles and the go-to-market plan. You're more than welcome to download a copy of our Create Meaningful Growth on the Road to Recovery from HaynesMarcoms.agency where you can find more information about some of our guiding principles that I will be presenting here today. Now, coming up, we'll look at the principles followed by the infrastructure. 
and talking about some of really my experiences and challenges that I've had along the way in marketing. And how to really adapt and be agile in this current environment. For us, this is how we approach um, the change in um, how we are delivering our proposition into the marketplace. Making sure that all aspects of the business and all of your employees um, and, um, and the partners are able to move in the same direction with you. And this is important that we are really placing um, our, um, our, our strategies on what the business is trying to achieve. Um, and particularly what we're trying to achieve for our customers. First, we're going to be looking at the mission. What is our value proposition? And how does that work with the people? So what problems are we solving for our customers? And what value can you and your people add as part of the customer journey? In order to build this market outreach, we take the four following steps. Firstly, listen to the market. We really need to understand what is the sentiment right now? What are our customers going through? And what are their expectations? How are we as a business able to uh, have a really focused mission for how we can support what they're trying to achieve? And really understand what is going on in the minds of our customers. From here, we can build a much clearer business strategy and have the customer insights and understanding of market orientation in which to develop an engagement model where we're both involving our people, your product, and aligning all aspects of the business in order to bring greater um, flexibility and agility to move forward. Um, this is part of the very, um, I say, uh, the conventional ideas of marketing that you may have heard the seven P's or the four P's. And this is um, sort of the, 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 the underlying foundation for what marketing has been built on. And, and whilst it very little has changed over the last 20 or 30 years, it is still important to understand what the process, place, promotion, and price of your products are and how they sit in the market and how that reflects the value that you are offering at this particular time. Things have changed so much, and we know that people's budgets are much more restricted than they were. They're also looking for greater value and greater return from their investments, whether they're a business or even a consumer. So how are you able to convey the value that you can add? Following that is the deployment. How are you developing the market narrative, the story behind the problem, and then having a distribution plan that really connect with your key buyers. From here, you're building this brand and value, making sure that you have a targeted audience and you're positioned to get the right place in the market. Once you've been deploying your campaigns, it's obviously important to make sure you're optimizing them. Now, this is constant review, iteration, and feedback from your customers, and ensuring that you're always reinforcing your brand value and how the role of data insights and uh, channel performance is able to contribute to sales value. The five key narrative components are comprised of the following five. And with these, there are some key questions that you should be looking at. Now, things were different six months ago. People were in a different place, and you were in a different place. Competition has changed, and therefore, certainly our approach have to adapt. Maybe budgets are more restrained. Maybe the number of people working in your organization has been reduced. And certainly the sentiment, the, the, the way that we need to connect with people has to change much more as well. So key questions. If you could make a promise to your audience, what would it be? What are you hoping to deliver to them? How do you differ from other competitors in the marketplace? How can you find a way to, to have your own distinct ownership of a gap in the market? What do you want to be known for as part of this? What do you want people to recognize your business for? 
And what are the values and how can you connect them to your stakeholders? And when I say stakeholders, that can be your customers, your partners, your employees. So how can they help you communicate what you're doing and how you're doing things? And finally, what's the start of business that you want to show? I mean, particularly at this time, we have seen some businesses make it an extremely wrong decision and they've had a lot of crisis management. Others, particularly when it comes to sales, have maybe tried to sell too much at this period. And that has really hampered their opportunities and perhaps caused some damage to their existing relationships. So when you're looking at yourself and your business and what you want to be known for, some of the key questions, and this is really where senior management need to be part of this, um, and not just let the marketing get on with it. Because marketing needs to contribute to the overall success of the business, especially more so now because of the different ways that we are communicating with people. So really make sure that your senior management team are part of this um, adjustment to your marketing strategy or potentially pivoting so that you can understand where the business is heading over the next couple of years as they've had to uh, rework budgets and accounts and, and, and change uh, what their original plans were. What can be your immediate objectives to helping to achieve those aims? And what role can you play in um, the development within the industry over the next few years? Now, when we talk about commercial and business aims, um, again, you know, things are very different to, to where we were uh, six months ago. There's a lot about survival now than there was, and much more about maximizing growth, and potentially you know, needing to look at the benefits that you can offer to your local community and potentially the environment. Um, that perhaps more so uh, with staycations. So if you're a hotelier or a local tour operator, how can you better develop those relationships um, with other local providers so you can help um, develop and, and grow what business you do have. And when it comes to objectives, it's about those activities that will contribute to your business aim. Activities that can be fully measured, that can be agreed across the team, and will have uh, specific targets that you can reach within a time frame so you can measure the success. I also say consider pestle. If you haven't heard of PESTLE before, it is the factors within business that could affect your plan. It could be the political, the economical, the social, the technological. Um, and um, when you are thinking about these, and we know that we've been affected a lot over the last few months, uh, particularly at the moment, um, you know, a lot of travel businesses were expecting to be able to offer packages to Greece, and, and suddenly um, that's been stopped. So how do you um, are able to remain that, that, have that flexibility and adapt constantly uh, in order to help achieve those aims? Now, certainly for me, um, without understanding what the direction of the business is, it's quite hard to really develop a strong value proposition, which is able to uh, have longevity and be part of your longer term strategy. Yes, there are short term tactics, but overall, how are you trying to be communicating your business uh, to your marketplace and then be able to understand how you're contributing to their success? Firstly, the vision. The vision being, well, where is your company going? What is the direction of the company? Are you showing that you are determined to make that move forward? And how are you making that move forward? So where do you want to be in the future? And this will all help inspire both your stakeholders and particularly your employees to contributing towards that success. Well, with the mission, and this is really more about what you're trying to achieve for your customers. So what is the purpose of your business? and its primary objective, the here and now. A lot of businesses um, have had to really adapt because we're not in a boom time. 
So how um, are your uh, tools, technologies, or products able to assist and help them achieve what they need to achieve? And finally, it's the values. It's, these are the things that support your vision. It might be that you need to rework your values slightly and ensure that all your employees are working towards those goals to shape that business culture. Um, a, a company that doesn't have those strong values will struggle to find the right team members, the right partners, and be able to connect with people on the right level. Um, and, and to build a strong team around you, whether it's your immediate team or your extended team through your associates and partnerships, is essential, particularly at this time, when we're seeing greater collaboration between businesses. So looking at values and the style of business that you want to deliver, speak to the people within your business, speak to your stakeholders, get an understanding of what they feel the business is all about, about what you're trying to offer to your customers, how you want to be seen be perceived externally and internally in order to develop a social purpose for your company. Now, like uh, many products, um, particularly if I do a lot of stuff within B2B, it's not just about our customers, but it's our end customers. And so generally, our the consumers. And whilst they are not our direct customers, it's about understanding how we can improve business for our customers that then enhances the value and the brand for their end consumers. So how are you part of that entire cycle and contributing to those success? For us at Haynes Marcom, um, we um, have ourselves, while we're a small business, we have developed our mission and our vision and our values. And this helps us focus on the type of businesses that we're looking for, type of clients that we can work with and help share with our prospects and our existing customers what we're trying to do and how we're trying to achieve it. Uh, and particularly today, um, some of these values will allow uh, people to be able to identify the right partner for them. And so for you uh, internally, it, it's, it's such an important time to make sure that these are really grounded because these are the foundations that help build your key messages, your value proposition and key messages, which we'll be coming on to in just a bit. Now, your audience is obviously essential and knowing who they are and how you can help them at this particular time. Understanding who your current clients are um, and who you actually think your customers are. Now, often there's disparity between the two. So really look at your current customer portfolio set. Who are they really? And who is your ideal customer? And when I say ideal customer, it, it might be that you're looking for profitability or maybe um, you're looking uh, for um, growing, um, having, having more customers rather than less customers. And, and therefore, it's, it's really good to spend time looking at um, existing purchases and contracts to see where the greatest value is coming from for you as a business. Some people might be going for the mass market, others might be just going for the niche, but for a more profitable one. Uh, it might, be, might require harder work, um, but for, for once you know exactly what your profile of your audience is, you're able to develop then a more focused and targeted um, value for and then build a clear sales cycle in which that those customers are able to interact. Now, between B2B and B2C, it's quite a different sales journey, and we have to recognize that. They, they, they're not one of the same. Although we're seeing more uh, consumer tactics, consumer marketing tactics, being used within the B2B sales journey, um, they, they are never the same. For the, for the first instance, B2B is a longer sales cycle. There's many more people part of that decision. And at the moment, people are at risk of losing their jobs. They're worried about making the wrong decision. There's greater, um, uh, 
they say there's a lot more people looking at how decisions are being made and where money is being spent, the procurement process. And uh, the, the, you need to be developing this clear sales marketing funnel that will empower your customer facing teams to really build those relationships with them. Well, for a B2C audience, it is a personal buying decision, it's more transactional. But about creating a lasting memory and quality experience for them to return as a customer. So how are you able to communicate trust, security, credibility, and that emotional connection that will get them to uh, have confidence in, in making that purchase and remaining with you into the future? For the B2B side, it would be worth looking at how you identify different types of buyers the economic buyer, the budget holder, the one who is looking for the return of investment and how they're able to achieve their commercial aims. The user who has their own personal KPIs to stay in their job. So how are you helping them stay in their job? How are you helping them improve their performance? And how are you helping them become more secure in their um, within their role? The technical part. This could be the procurement assessor. Now, um, this is the person that will look at the contract, look at the costs. Um, the, the person who um, might not necessarily have anything to do with the actual use of the product, but how can you give them confidence that they are spending money in the right place? And then there's the coach. Um, this could be a business consultant. Um, someone who would be referring you and your products, um, or it could be someone within the business um, that is helping with maybe strategic change. So how can you connect with their immediate needs and priorities? Now, understanding from the poll that most of you are B2B or work across B2B and B2C, um, you can really sort of start to identify the different types of buyers and personalities that you are going to be engaging with um, within the buying cycle. And for these, it's not that you just target one, it's that you look at targeting many, uh, which will become an account-based marketing exercise and how you use different levels of seniority within your organization to uh, build those connections across the different levels within your prospect organization in order to make um, the, the sales cycle Cycle, uh, more, um, much faster and much more seamless in order to uh, get the customer to buy in faster. And finally, it might be the end customer. So how are you helping them understand how that by working with you, you are able to help them achieve greater success with the target audience that they're going for? Competitors. Um, are we Red Sea um, or are we Blue Ocean? And uh, if any of you had read the book Blue Ocean, it's definitely worth a read. And that is all about how you differ or how you identify a gap in the market and you can own that gap. And look at what your customers are currently doing. How are they reacting to the market? How are they potentially doing things differently? And how can you set yourself apart? Identifying four or five different competitors will certainly allow you to uh, deep dive into their messages, um, their the channels and market, marketing messages uh, and, and, and the information that they're sending out there and how that they're engaging um, across their, their different sales platforms. So you can identify a way in which you can own the journey that you have to show that you differentiate. Having a competitive landscape will also help you towards your business aims. So where are you now and where are you heading? And how can your objectives help you achieve those? Are you looking at increasing your ability to execute? Or are you looking at building your completeness of vision, be it like thought leadership or, um, or, or, or developing a new, uh, a, a new uh, process or um, offering within the marketplace? And how are you able to develop that narrative and be able to incrementally um, achieve a greater and more prominent position amongst your competitors? 
So we've looked at the core narrative components. And now it's time to look at the role of product and how that then contributes to your narrative. Now, when it comes to the product roadmap, um, I always believe that marketing should be involved uh, within that process. From a B2B side, you're able to understand what's coming um, and you're able to therefore plan around some of the developments that are going to be released. You can also look at what the needs are from customers and the marketplace and contribute to the product development. And there will obviously be a need right now with COVID-19 to put certain developments on hold because there are going to be other priorities that customers need to be able to benefit from this situation in the marketplace. Whereas on the consumer side, it might be more about supply and demand. Particularly within travel, uh, we know that um, the, 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 the demand has been reduced but the supply more so is restricted, particularly if uh, certain uh, regions, countries are, are restricting the, the number of travelers to their marketplace. So how, as, as for example, an online travel agent, um, are you able to pr present the products that are actually available? So with product development, you know, really look at what are your most product, your popular products? What gets you in the door? What are their biggest challenges with the product? How can you ease those challenges with the product to make them um, more user-friendly, increase the usage? The more that a customer depends on the product, the more they're going to keep using the product, and the more they're going to talk about uh, the value your product has. Whereas with uh, the consumer side, how can you make that buyer journey seamless? How can you make that enjoyable and make sure that there's the quality and availability of the product? Also looking at profitability, which products are, are, are bringing you better revenue and how can you make sure you present those products in the right way to the right customer so your customers constantly return because they've enjoyed the experience. With developing the narrative, first it's about developing that story and the story behind the problem. How did we arrive at this place? How did your customers get here? What is the solution to that problem and how can they overcome that with this solution? And that will help you towards this value proposition. Um, firstly, um, it's uh, how could you describe what you do in 10 words or less? Sometimes you don't have time to say, uh, you, don't have, you don't have minutes, um, hours, to talk about what you do. You need to get to the point. I'll give you an example, blockchain. Does anybody know what blockchain is in 10 words? Um, and this is the problem, is, is why blockchain is not successful at the moment, because you're unable to explain it easily and simply for an everyday person. How are you able to then develop that story out and explain the rationale and the proof and evidence for what you're offering in order to develop a strong elevator pitch that can then be used by your all your customer-facing teams so they can explain what it is you offer and the value that that gives to your customers. From here, it's about developing key messages or otherwise known as the value framework. So what key points do you want people to take away and hear to understand? Keep it short, sharp. Why are you different? How are you different? What value are you bringing? Make sure you've got a couple of key headline points. And these all serve as a foundation to all your branding, your marketing efforts, your content, both in written and spoken communication. With people all out and about, or say at home out and about, um, and they are uh, using LinkedIn, they are emailing people, they are having webinar conversations. Make sure that they understand those key messages and return to those key messages every time. Because a central overall message is a value proposition, a value framework, and evidence that is then tailored by buyer type or customer demographic will hit and, 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 and connect with your customer on a much deeper level. I always think, how would you talk about your product to your grandma? Even if you're a B2B product, 
you've got to feel proud about what you do. So how can you help um, even everyday people understand? When you've got new talent coming in, how can you get them to embrace those values and uh, have confidence with what they are presenting to the market? Now we're going to have a quick look at uh, infrastructure and performance before we come to some of the questions that some of you have sent me. So the go-to-market plan, you have um, identified what your um, business goals are, your objectives, your vision, mission, and values. You've developed this story about how you're explaining yourself. So how does that plan work? Well, firstly, what is your sales marketing model? Have you developed a sales marketing? From the point that first someone first finds out about your company to the point that someone purchases or even repurchases, what is that journey they're going through? Either as a consumer or a business person. How are your customer faces facing teams engaging with each stage of that journey? And even as a customer or your account team, how are they then helping to reinforce those values to that customer return? Using partners. It's a great way, not just to develop collaboration, but to reach a wider network. So have you got your partners engaged with your story? And finally, your CRM, whether this is a sophisticated platform or whether you're just using spreadsheets, ensuring that you're recording all activity and engagement will help you identify how your sales and marketing funnel is working. And then it's how you do the distribution. It's your channels and selecting the channels that work for your buyers and making sure you've got the right content and assets for each of those channels that then tap in to the sales marketing funnel. One of the challenges I find with, with a lot of clients is investment. Um, they think that if they, they, they get a marketeer or a marketing agency and they pay them a monthly fee or a salary and the job is done. Well, it's important to make sure you've got budget to be able to go out beyond your existing network in order to bring new uh, people into your sales funnel. And finally, efficiency and optimization. What processes do you have in place to make sure that your investment and your resources are used to, to the best um, of their ability? And, and this is why I, I always believe in, in, in cross-departmental working when it comes to marketing, because Market, the market is in the word marketing. You are going to market without marketing, and then sales is part of marketing. Customer service is all part of marketing. And how are you able to make um, and share information and, and, and bring greater efficiency there? So when you're measuring performance, first thing is how can your overall marketing strategy contribute to the aim, and what is the evidence that is applied? Um, as a marketer, you need to justify what you're doing. So to show how that's contributing to wider business things, not how it's just bringing in new customers. And then with the marketing drivers, it's you know, how um, are the channels relevant? How are they performing? What are the engagements? And how are you optimizing each of those investments to improve the return of investment? So, that, those are the key aspects that I would say um, you need to look at before you even think about doing any big campaigns because a, a big campaign needs to rest on um, what the actual business stands for and um, what you're trying to achieve uh, for uh, your customers. Here at Haynes Marcoms, uh, we're able to help you out with value frameworks, go-to-market planning, building your strategic brand mark on content creation lead generation and uh, support you in digital marketing and PR. Now, to come to some of your questions, so thank you very much for sending your questions here. I've got one from Christina who says, under the current climate, would you rather keep marketing in-house or externalized? Well, I never want people to lose their jobs, um, but let's say you don't really have much of a marketing department right now, or maybe um, you just have one marketing person and you're wondering whether you hire more. Well, you've got to look at the economics of scale uh, to give you an idea, and I'm speaking from the UK perspective, is that uh, an, an average marketeer, their salary is between 24 to 45,000 pounds, where you're looking at about three to, to 5,000 pounds expenditure per month. So 
So it's worth speaking to an agency about what they can do. The other issues about having someone internally is that um, there are costs for training, administration, um, teamwork, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so you've got to consider how much of their time is going to be spent doing actual marketing. I also think from an ROI perspective, and this is how we work with our clients, is that even our retainer fees are part of ROI. So we're able to gauge exactly what, what their investment is actually generating for them. Um, the benefit of having someone internally is that you've got someone who can actually manage the process and coordinate it. Um, and what can be difficult when working with an agency, if an agency is working with a very busy senior leader who doesn't have time for this, then the, the, the value of the investment is lost. Um, a question from Liliana. Uh, how can we make sure we do not abuse the words like new normal, coronavirus, social distancing, but still communicate the right way? Um, yeah, I, I, I completely uh, understand. And um, to be honest, one of the difficulties, particularly with using like the words coronavirus, is that not only do you continue to scare people, but there's a lot of limitations in, in advertising, a lot of restrictions. Um, Facebook, for example, uh, doesn't uh, allow you to, to really use the words COVID-19 or coronavirus in your advertising. So you do need to steer away from those. But it's about giving them confidence in what they're buying. Um, it's about making them feel secure. And most I think, importantly right now is your existing customers. How you, as, as I explained at the beginning, I'm nervous about traveling this Friday. And yes, I'm traveling with a, uh, I will shall not name a um, budget airline, but it would have been nice, it would still be nice to be told that my flight is going to be leaving, that uh, I know what the processes and procedures are uh, for departure and flying and arrival, so that then I can actually start to look forward and enjoy uh, my, my, my holiday. And, and I would say that if you're looking at B2B here, it is more about how can you help them survive, but how can you help them grow and really focus on the more positive words. Um, rather than uh, some of the jargon that has been going around today. From Villapa, uh, how would you encourage marketing and sales working closer together? Um, when I've worked internally, um, you, it's, it really often is the marketing person initiative. Um, just a lot of, lot of hard work goes into that and, and making sure that you're able to have frank, open, transparent conversations with the sales team. And I always say is, Hi, sales guys, what problems are you having? Where are you struggling? What's your barriers to selling the product? And understanding um, where they're getting stuck in the sales book. Um, and so helping your sales team by providing them with the, the relevant call to actions or the content, um, potentially even hand, hand holding them. In a business to business environment, if you take a consultative approach, then you're able to um, help the customer and guide the customer. And often you need to train and inform and educate your sales team. So empower them with the right information. How to make sure um, to achieve consistency on your communication channels. This is exactly why you need the value proposition and key messages. You need to return to those all the time. Especially, let's say you get a social media agency well, they can't just run off and create a plan for you. In order for them to do a, a, a job that's going to meet your marketing KPIs and your commercial aims, um, you need to provide them with a clear brief that includes the value proposition and key messages and what you expect of them to achieve for you. And that needs to be for all the channels that you work with. Now, a, a channel is just another access to market. So I never see them as independent silos. They need to be working together, which is why other than agency, it's important for us to understand what other agencies or freelancers are doing. So we're able to um, make things more cost efficient and share the information. And um, you know, if, if someone sees some, something on TV and someone sees something by email, another one sees something by social, those messages need to be the same. So try to keep those, um, try to make sure that everyone has the brand guidelines uh, ahead uh, in the front of it. Um, and then what do you think about, about your employees as marketing channel? Absolutely, at this time, yes. I mean, LinkedIn, um, I mean, you, 
your sales team would have already been making e sending emails and making phone calls. Um, so how is that any different to using LinkedIn? I think you need to empower your employees. You need to make them feel that they are part of um, the success of the business and, and, and survival of the business. And uh, the more that you can have small group conversations with different departments and across departments, the more that you can then bring them in to, um, to the values of the business, the vision and the mission um, to achieving those key business goals. Um, when it comes to systems uh, to recommend for B2B, uh, it all depends on the size of your business. Um, and I'm more than happy to talk to any of you um, if you've got any further questions on the back of this. Uh, I mean, a, a CRM is good to have, uh, but it depends again on how big your business is. If you're a startup, it might be uh, quite expensive, uh, but I would definitely perhaps look at something like uh, HubSpot because they've got a whole range of options depending on the size of your business and they've got brilliant training modules on there. Uh, and Salesforce, um, obviously that's been uh, around for quite some time. Um, for me, I, I find the interface still a bit clunky um, and not as fluid as HubSpot. Um, so if you would like uh, any further information um, about this presentation, uh, please don't hesitate to get in contact with me. Please remember also uh, to check out the e-guide on haynesmarcons.agency. Uh, that will give you further details. The other thing is to check out uh, a new platform that we've launched uh, from Haynes Marcons called travelmarket.life, uh, a new website where you can find uh, a lot of information and guides uh, about the travel marketplace to be able to help you potentially identify new avenues and new opportunities for marketing or developing partnership and sales. Thank you to WHTT uh, for inviting me along to deliver this masterclass today. Um, next week, uh, on the same day, on the same time, um, there is a session on storytelling, which um, would be a, it's a fantastic next installment uh, to what uh, I've been telling you today. So. There will be um, a, a social media company talking to you about that next week. But I'd like to thank you again for joining me, and uh, I hope to hear from you. All the best and good luck with uh, your marketing.